Okay, what we're going to take a look at in this section is image upload. And to help us out with this, what we're going to use is Cloudinary. And we discussed the reasons why in the introduction. It offloads the responsibility of image storage to the cloud. And Cloudinary also provides some services that are going to help us out with our images. Certainly in the respect of we're a square image site and the reason we're a square image site is because the CSS can be a bit painful if we allow our users to upload images in all different aspect ratios. So we're going to stick to square images and Cloudinary gives us the facility to automatically crop an image around a user's face and that's another good reason for using this. It also gives us an opportunity to look at how we can integrate a third party API into our application. So let's take a look at what Cloudinary offers. And the first question you're probably thinking is, how much is this going to cost? Well, it costs nothing. And if we take a look at the pricing, then what we have is a free tier and no credit card is required. Now we get a certain number of things that we can do for a free account, but the free tier is pretty generous. There's plenty that we can do with this for our developer account to test the functionality and you shouldn't run into the boundaries of this unless you're creating a new version of Instagram and you've got millions of users then yes you're going to have to pay some money for this but for what we're doing then it's pretty okay for what we can use. We get a bunch of facilities to use with this and it's fine. It gives us plenty of options and it allows us to upload thousands of images I believe although I'm not seeing the actual number of images we're allowed but it's plenty for what we're doing this is absolutely plenty so what you will need for this is an account it doesn't cost anything so please sign up for free I'm going to log in and go to the dashboard and what you'll also need to do is verify your email account you will need a valid email account to do this and that's the only requirement because you will need to verify that before Cloudinary will allow you to upload photos. That's the only requirement. So I'm going to get to the dashboard stage. So please do go through the sign up process and I'll pause the video and get to the stage where I'm at the dashboard. Okay, so hopefully you've got to this stage. I've just signed into my account and you can see the various images that I've been using for testing. So you've probably got a cleaner Cloudinary account from me. There's probably a test image inside there. But once you've got to this stage, this gives us a few different things. It gives us a cloud name, an API key, and an API secret. Now, the way that this is going to work is that users are going to upload their image to our API. And then our API is going to go to Cloud News, Cloudinary's API to actually send the image and upload the image to Cloudinary and Cloudinary is going to send us a response back. So we can see the limits that we have on our free account. We've got 10 gigabytes of storage. We can have 20,000 image transformations a month and we've got 20 gigs of bandwidth as well. So pretty generous free tier and there's no way that we're going to run out of storage whilst we're developing this application. Obviously if you publish an app and you're using Cloudinary then there's a chance you could hit some of these limits but for this demonstration, for this training course, we're going to stick with what we've got here. So we're going to need these keys that we're going to add to our application and we'll come back to that. So let's take a look at the documentation that we get with Cloudinary. We've got a link to it over here, a knowledge base here as well. And we'll see what we get from the documentation when we click on this. So we've got a getting started and media upload, image and video transformations. And what we have here is integrations with many different platforms and we're going to be using the .NET SDK. The goal here is we only want authenticated users to be able to upload images. Our API is responsible for handling authentication. And what we're going to be doing is using the Cloud Ineri API keys so that we can securely transfer the image to Cloudinary and get response back from Cloudinary, which we'll then pass back to the user. So what we're going to be doing here is taking a look at the installation and we've got a NuGet package manager for Cloudinary.net, which we'll be making use of. And if we take a look at configuration, then to use this, we're going to need our cloud name, API key and API secrets. Easy. We've got all of that in our dashboard. 
and then we can create a new Cloudinary account and this gives us access to the Cloudinary functions. And if we take a look at the uploading images and videos using the .NET SDK, then what we can use here is an upload widget. We don't need that. We'll be using Angular for this. But what we do here is we use the Cloudinary upload and we pass it some upload parameters. And in our upload parameters, we can pass the file and anything else that we need to do inside there. And what this gives us back is an image upload result. And in the image upload result, let's see if we've got the response that we get back from this. And we get all of this information back in the response, including a secure URL we can use for the actual location of the image. So we've got plenty of documentation to help us out here. Once you've signed in, you'll have your API keys and your cloud name, but please make sure you've verified your email account with Cloudinary because you will run into a problem when you try and upload an image to this if you haven't done that part. So what we'll take a look at next is how we can configure this in our API. So what we're going to take a look at now is installing the Cloudinary package into our API and what we need to do to configure this as well. So I'm going to head over to VS Code. I'll just close down the open tabs and clean things up inside here. And what we want to do is open up our NuGet gallery once again. So Shift Command and P to open up the command window and we'll search and look for the NuGet gallery. And what we're looking for in here is simply Cloudinary. And we want Cloudinary.net by Cloudinary. Now I know for sure that version 1.12.0 has a bug. And there isn't a more recent version of this. I could look for pre-releases actually and see if there's a more recent version, but there isn't. The latest one is 1.12.0. I know this has got a bug, so I'm not going to waste our time by installing that one. It's actually missing a dependency that it needs. And what we'll do is we'll go for 1.11.0, which I know for sure works. If there's a later version than 1.12, feel free to go and install it. But if you do run into problems, then I know for sure 1.11.0 will not cause us any problems. And let's go ahead and install this one. And that's been installed. So what we can do then is we're going to set up the configuration for this. And what we're going to use for this in our API is we're actually going to use our appsettings.json file. Now this file we're not sending up to GitHub. So this is a safe place to store API keys. And this configuration is also read from whether it, we're in development mode or in production mode. It's going to be read from either way. Anything we store in AppSettings development is only read from when we're in development, but AppSettings is going to use the configuration inside here regardless of which mode we're running in. So what we're going to do inside here is we're going to add a section called Cloudinary Settings. And inside here, and let's just add the comma, we need three properties. We're going to need our cloud name, and that's going to be something. And we need our API key, and that's also going to be a string. And then we've got our API secret. And that's also going to be a string. So all we need to do in here, obviously, is populate the different settings here. So I'm just going to copy the cloud name paste it in here. I'm going to go and copy the API key and paste it in this one. And then I'm going to copy the API secrets and copy this to clipboard and paste this one in here. So please make sure you've got these in the exact right positions. If you get your API key and secret mixed up, then you're obviously going to have a problem. So I'm going to close this so I can stop blurring out what's going on here. And what we're going to do with this configuration is we're actually going to strongly type it. So what we're going to do inside our helpers folder is we're going to create a class and we're going to store our Cloudinary settings inside here. Well, when I say we're going to store them, we're going to set up properties for these different key elements. So we're going to have a string for the cloud name and we're going to have a string for the API key and we're also going to have a string for the API secrets. 
And so then what we're going to do is go to our application service extensions. And when we strongly type a key or configuration in this way, what we're doing is, I'll just add this at the top, and we'll say services, and we can say configure. And then we pass in our type, and we want to pass in our Cloudinary settings inside here. And then for this, what we do is we tell our configuration where to actually get the configuration here. So we'll say config, and we'll say get section. And then we can just pass in Cloudinary settings. As this is the name of the section that we gave it inside our app settings.json. And this is just a way that we can strongly type our configuration settings. There's still plenty of opportunity for spelling mistakes in the configuration files itself, but after we've made sure we've got that in there properly, then we can access our configuration via this Cloudinary Settings class. That's the idea of doing it this way. So what we'll take a look at next is adding a service that's going to take care of uploading and deleting photos from Cloudinary.